Thank you. Um, I'm Phil. I work at car sales. I do DevOps things. DevOps things are great. Um, and I'm here to talk about it. Our journey our, over the last maybe 18 months, I would say, um, and, and mainly regarding one specific tool. Um, but first, a little bit about car sales. Um, car sales is, is more than just selling cars. Um, we sell things that aren't cars. And we have other things that are cars that don't sell. Um, but uh, I don't know if this interests you, but we've got Mexican cars and boats, and we look at cars. We've got pictures of cars, we've got plenty of things about cars. Um, but we're also Australia's number one website. So everyone else is terrible, and we are awesome. Um, we do about 10 million. I don't know how accurate these are. Um, unique visitors a month. Um, that results in about three quarters of a billion searches. Um, and then we serve, what is that, 12 billion images a month. Um, so images, they say car sales. Images sell cars. So um, serving images is a, is a very important, very important thing. Um, so why are we here for a chat? Um, well, we're going to discuss a couple of problems that car sales had. Um, we're in the process of moving uh, from a on-premise data center um, located somewhere um, up to Amazon. Um, and that presents a few unique problems, or at least problems that we hadn't really had solutions for previously. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of them mainly is that logging is, is difficult to do. Um, so currently, we sort of had a, we're a big .NET shop. Um, developers have historically had a little bit of access to certain things. DevOps is obviously trying to bridge that uh, production access gap with devs, full stack, whatever, tenex engineers. Um, but getting it right is, is ultimately difficult, or getting things working how you want them is, is quite difficult. Um, for example, developers two years ago couldn't RDP into production machines. That's a smart move. Um, there's limited access through an ops person or through a, a, a tool that they've set up or they log back to their own database because they're geniuses. Um, it's just a difficult, difficult process. Um, the other thing with logs in general is that people don't, they're not very exciting. They're a bit dry, stale, kind of. They, they sort of they're after the fact. They're, they're a little bit hard to, to sort of grok, if you will. Um, they're out of sight, out of mind. Um, <coughs> And they are useful, but the usefulness is uh, is small relative to the amount of logs you have, um, generally. So, so because it was hard, because it's not a super exciting subject, um, people would seldom go to the logs. You'd have problems where the logs could have maybe helped you solve the log the problem straight away. Maybe they wouldn't be gone to because they're, they're not very exciting. Um, so, because of those two things. Um, Sometimes at car sales, it was a little bit, uh, a little bit of firefighting that, that maybe we could have avoided. It's sort of what we're doing with this. There's a fire, and that's that's us. Um, poor visibility when things go wrong, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you've all sort of felt the same way, um, and that was sort of multiplied. I don't have a mic. Um, that was sort of multiplied by the fact that we were also moving to Amazon at the same time. So. We were having all these problems originally, and then we thought, hey, why not go and make it more difficult um, by introducing um, a few extra bits of complexity, such as the machines not necessarily existing and uh, spreading out our services more thoroughly. So at the moment, we sort of have a few, well, historically, we've had a few sort of farms of, of servers in one data center, and now we're sort of sort of opening the doors and there's, there's a farmer service here doing, doing X, there's a farmer service here doing Y, um, and the total number of machines has gone up, I don't know, triple, quadruple, five times in a year's time. Um, and, that, and, and that's a daunting thing for logging from your application. So, so we wanted some help. Um, so we looked at a few options and we ended up deciding on Sumo Logic. Um, which is what I'll sort of be focusing on from here as a, as a specific solution to logging. Um, part of the reason we so chose Sumo specifically is that it is a, um, a SaaS product that would help us, uh, as a, as a multi-tenant SaaS product, means you just have a single point of entry. Um, 
there's no migration of our existing systems, which were all terrible, um, and we didn't have to commit. So we, we still sort of have car sales as a big sort of, why don't you build it if you have so many developers kind of, kind of shop. Um, we sort of have a policy of, of, of doing that to an extent, um, but if we want to have tools that we want to have broadly across all users, um, there's sort of a, a, a level of quality, I guess, we want to, we want to achieve. So, um, the other benefits for us at Sumo, Sumo, we're, uh, we're self, the fact that it's a self-service tool. So we can open up to, to more people and say, you can have access, you can have access, you can have access. Oh, I've got a microphone. Everyone can have, <coughs> everyone can have access. <coughs> this is great. Um, so we we give it not just to devs, not just to ops, but perhaps access to a business analyst. Perhaps a SEO specialist wants to look at URLs that are accessed and their query stream in a result, and maybe they can have access as well. It's not a big deal. It's, it's very simple to do. Um, um, and that was part of the problem then was that not, not that we weren't, we couldn't access things, but perhaps the things we were logging or the things we were monitoring were not the things we needed to monitor. So we were maybe monitoring uh, page load speed on average across an application, and maybe that's fine, but 90% of your transactions are one millisecond, and the one key transaction is 10 seconds, and that's terrible. So um, it, it, it's really about bubbling that cream to the top or, or picking out the important parts. Maybe you've got a million log entries, and that one password changed by root equals whatever is the one line you need to fix that, that one exact problem you had. Um, so now what we, we, we're sort of promoting is a, is a process where logs, uh, as a team is supposed to be responsible more for their application, um, they can pick what they need to have there. So we've got teams who log search duration, application performance, they log everything. Maybe they were logging it before their SQL database and then running a query against it, but now everyone can see that data, um, and not just not just that team. It's not in one silo. It's, it's searchable across the business. Um, business is free to, to log. Teams are free to log whatever they want. The business is free to then query against that data, whatever they can find as useful. Um, we focused on addressing our problems. So because the teams make the decisions, we were focusing on, on problems that we could get solutions to, not just sort of abstract arbitrary from the sky sort of decisions. So. Uh, that led us to have uh, a lot more real-time visibility. So because we're sort of pumping in business intelligence to an extent into Sumo, um, we can see more data around, say, search results numbers globally, where people are searching from, what we're getting, what we're getting out of it. Um, and this would be a side effect of having more information flowing to the system, not necessarily, um, whereas previously we would have not logged this, we would have logged it somewhere, and no one would have ever built a dashboard. So, um, the feedback loop is, is reduced and can spread. Um, and that leads us sort of to the final part of, of, of from the business side of it. Um, we're closing that loop of, of getting things done. So previously we would have had a, a one hour deployment spread across a three month development cycle. I mean, this is going back a while, um, and now we're doing sort of whatever, one minute deployments, five times a day, but we can log, we can say this is a deployment, this is the difference, we can compare the difference. That, that's an interesting amount of data for, for someone, I mean, for me, for, for certain teams, but for other teams, they've got a, they've got a guy who cares about. Um, and the, the friction is, is very low, so the real benefit to us is, is sort of it's easy to onboard a developer, or it's easy to onboard someone in the business and say, hey, this is interesting, this is important, um, because it's quick, we can, we can make changes, we can be agile, I mean, I hate using the word agile, but we can, we can do it easily for zero money, because we have something there, and running a query costs us nothing, running a query every hour costs us nothing, we just need to make a decision or get it done. Um, and that sort of continual improvement is, is obviously a, a benefit. Um, so then that sort of leads into to some examples. Um, so this is a, one particular dashboard from, from Car Sales. Um, 
which has been created by a developer who is in the audience, um, and uh, basically relating to our search. So there's a couple of, of graphs here, um, but the main sort of crux is that these particular ones that, that look like sausages, um, they're sort of average standard deviation over a period, um, maybe 10 ticks, I think, or 15. Um, and this one, <coughs> with the purple triangles, is outside of the standard deviation. So that is an anomaly, that is a bad thing for the index of average duration outliers, which I'm sure means a lot to some particular person, um, but the rest seem to be doing pretty well. Um, and that, but that's an easy win, and, and that dashboard, that section is a query on some stat, then averaging it, and taking a time series, and then saying, okay, well if, on average it's, I should have memorized these numbers better, if on average it's 50, and suddenly it's 75 or 80, then, then that's a, there's, there's something wrong there. Um, and we can that send an alert, we have that trigger an auto scale with group, we have that do any number of things. Um, the other benefit is then, sort of from the business side, we can do customer experiments, we can do um, uh, A-B testing and, and other things and, and sort of monitor it in, in certain ways. Um, so a couple of other examples, this is just another dashboard that, that shows some percentiles. Um, a couple of issues that we picked up on that, we've, that we wouldn't have without Sumo, um, we have an app called Boat Sales, we sell boats, we knew. Um, we had some crashes on boat sales, they were in the area of not reproducible, will not fix, um, which is a great area to be in, but customers are reporting issues. We have a few tools to, to determine what a crash is and, and why, um, but nothing was, was saying anything was wrong. So nothing's wrong, people are complaining. Get back to that one. Um, then then, then where, where can you go? So we actually had um, that particular team found a problem where search query strings were being appended infinitely until Apple would stop allocating memory to your application and terminate it. And they saw a crash, but it was so infrequent. It was frequent for the people searching for that thing, but it was so infrequent in the scheme of things that it wasn't identified. So Sumo specifically, there's a tool called LogReduce that takes patterns of your search results, and this one was a distinct outlier because of the length of the duration. So on average, it would have been not great, but as a percentile, it was, it was ginormous. Um, that's a little bit of that one. Um, another example is we had, we do a lot of fraud tracking. I mean, one of car sales big benefits is that, that we're a little bit more, uh, how, do you, how do you put it, we're a bit more, mm, we've got a bit more around people and the kind of is with knowing who you are, I guess, and treating you, treating you correctly. Um, and we often get scammers trying to social engineer sellers to get money. Um, and it happens quite a bit. Um, and it's probably a lot of, a lot of source of complaints. Um, and the advantage across a silo of applications, last time I checked we had 500 applications that are, that are in our current sort of pipeline, missing a, a big deal of other applications. Um, how do you tell one team, one squad, they've got a problem when there's 10 squads that touch uh, a particular user's data for a particular transaction over a one second period. And, and one of the things we know is we can then just search for that user identifier and find the entire history, almost like a log across applications of a tail of everything that user did. And not just they clicked here and did this, it's, it's everything. So it's, I mean, there's, anyway. So it's, the, the benefit is there, there's, there's unexpected benefits with, with doing searches against your data. Um, and yeah, rolling up disparate content from apps is, is a, a sort of late benefit we've found just from having so much in there. So once you sort of hit a lot, you get, you get a few benefits that you, you might not have thought of. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, it's still an ongoing journey. We've got so many apps at car sales not doing things necessarily the best way. It's still a, a journey to, to punch them in the face and get them doing. Um, but, but that's some examples of us. So thank you for listening to me talk. So we got, we got time for questions, Bill. So, there, was a, um, there was a slide with questions on it. <laughs> so.
see, assume there was a slide that said questions now. Um, so if we got a question, now's, now's a great time. What are your other motivations for moving to the cloud as a .NET shop? Can you be more specific? So, uh, a, a, apart from logging, what were the other decisions that motivated you to go to the cloud? Oh, in general. Yeah, and, and the why did you choose uh, Amazon over some of the other? Um, I'm not sure of the second answer to that question. Yeah. Um, but the answer to the first question, I, I mean, we were a single data center company yeah. um, located in a certain state that is in Victoria. And much like a few other of our peers, of which I think there's a few people here, um, there's, we were in a managed environment. So historically, car sales, um, I don't know if car sales entirely, but, but some of the businesses we've, we've purchased and whatever, there's sort of like the scale, if I could have a graph, there's a scale of management at 100% where de developers, maybe they didn't exist, and then that goes to zero. And on the other side, there's sort of that business agility or agility to, to redeploy or, I mean, I don't know, agile, cloud, DevOps. Um, but being able to do things quickly is, is increasing. So I think part of the problem was resiliency, so we're a single data center, that causes us a problem. Um, secondly, because we were partially managed, there's a limit to what the business can choose to do. So if we want to use Lambda for some reason, we can't because the current place doesn't have Lambda and maybe they'll get a Lambda equivalent from VMware in six months and that's cool. I mean, it's not a comment against the current place, but it doesn't exist. And I mean, much like Amazon in Sydney, it's like they don't have Lambda here. So we can't really use Lambda, or, or businesses can't use Lambda because it's not here. So specifically moving out of the current environment, I guess was a growth thing. And Amazon compared to Azure specifically, or GCE, I think Amazon's just the more uh, mature, although I'm, I'm a big fan of some of the stuff Azure does, some of the stuff, um, because they're very developer friendly first because of MSDN, whereas Amazon is, can be a little bit esoteric and because everything's explicit, it can be it can be difficult. But once you explicitly do everything yourself, then it's easy. Is that a reasonable answer? Yeah. yeah. Question up there. Oh. Um, so I didn't actually see the name of the tool. So this lamp here. What's the name of the tool? The logic tool. Super logic is the tool. Okay. How is it charged? Is it uh, per user per volume? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Based on the number. It's, it's both of those data. things, yeah. But ma mainly, mainly ingestion. Oh. Could, could you tell us a little more about uh, the journey to determine what you log and how you log it? Did you start putting entries in every process, or what was that kind of learning? That's a, that's a oh, yes, I didn't really touch on car sales logging for Sumo. Um, so I've only been in car sales two years, so there's a period that I'm, I'm sort of is, is whispers from the, the history books. Um, but because we're a .NET shop, we're using CSN login, uh, which is a library that, that we've written, which is based on nlog logging, so we can have an nlog file that has some targets, and we, we developers can, can edit that to an extent. Um, and that was historically how it was done. Um, the targets for that logging were varied. So we've had Elk stacks, we've had um, SQL, we've had just file logs. Sometimes people are doing all of them at different, pardon me, at different levels. Um, but the, the real problem there is that, that this team is five people. They look at their logs in SQL um, and their team leader, product owner, checks a stat from SQL. We literally had a scenario the other, a couple of months ago where uh, they, they had a performance issue with a dependency. So they, we don't log that, it's, it's not our, it's not us, we don't, we don't, we don't care what that is. Uh, so they added logging, they added some performance logging. Oh yes, that's definitely the problem. And it was it was sort of a moment where, well, well of course it's the, it's the problem, you just wasted two days of your time implementing this this thing that, that you didn't need because we had that data somewhere else, you could have just done a search and seen, okay, well search results on this, this and now, five seconds and then you're, you're timing out your, your fail over. So, um, but also, in historically, car sales like, was, was more of a monolith. I know it's a, it's a sort of cliche story almost, but 
but car sales as a product was one big tool that had one output of logs some years ago. I don't know how many that would have been, but before my time. So it, maybe it wasn't a problem then because everything they needed to see was from this one place into one place and they had everything. But as it's become fragmented, and now we're, we're, we're at a lot of applications now, and a lot of who owns, well, not, not, not who owns it, but there's a lot of places things could go wrong. You want to bubble that, that stuff up. So previously, the teams I've worked with closely were using SQL for everything, and that's also a security problem because we've got every single application talking to SQL for everything, every time. And it's, it just boggles my mind that they thought that was fine. Um, <laughs> so, so the, 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 yeah. So, us, us choosing Sumo in terms of picking Sumo over alternatives. I mean, we we did. Carsales loves building things, so we would love to say like a search engine, which is terrific. We would say, why would we use X when we have a team of Spetsnaz developers over here just clipping the nails and doing nothing? We'll get them on it and, and build a brilliant tool. And, and could we have built Sumo? I, I, I don't think we could build the exact, like the, anyway, there's that, there's that benefit that everyone has to make, but for us it's like we get, we get a lot more across the board than we would if we did it ourselves and versus at the, when we made our decisions versus alternatives. So we were, we were pretty terrible and then we, we kept doing that a lot and then we decided we need something better. Is that, is that a fine? That's a great question. Um, effectively, car sales, we don't keep credit card information. So the, the, the PII that, that I would have access to would be very limited. So in terms of which team can have access to which information for car sales, I mean, we don't keep date of birth, we don't keep your tax file number, we don't care. Like, there's a lot of things we don't care about and that you can make an ad and sell on car sales without, right? So uh, the answer is yes, but, but a lot of the application data we put in there the answer is really that there's not a lot of, I know metadata mining could be very useful, but um, there's not a lot of specifics in there you could find that would, it, it, it's not a, it's not an actual concern for us. And then in terms of PCI uh, SS, having it in a different company, um, there was some concern with having things offshore and not locally, and but I mean, we, those were satisfied by people who are satisfied by things like that. So, so you were like restricting it from the information you put in the Sumo Log, or are you? So, so in terms it? of yeah, so in terms of PCI compliance, for example, we don't put credit card information anywhere because we don't touch it. Car sales doesn't touch it. It goes straight to the to the vendor basically. So we don't we don't have it written down. We don't people don't fax in credit cards or we don't store them in Sumo. Um, in terms of application logging that goes to everyone. None of that data should really be, maybe there's a member ID in there and, and that can be used to look up something. But where in terms of developers having access to other developers' things, we're, we're quite comfortable. And I feel like that's a kind of a, a contemporary approach instead of siloing it. I don't think we have any secret, or well, at least not that I'm aware of, any secret sort of skunk works where we, we're trying to work out uh, who you are and where you live. And, and, and other, we, we do should try and show you, maybe show you a better but that's based on data that's not secret information. Am I answering that? Do you, yeah, is that, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, how far down the outstack are you going with the We still have some stacks running, so, but they're naughty, they're naughty people. And are they gonna eventually go the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, because we have so many say so many, we have maybe 100 developers. Because we have so many apps, every change we do is X time. To change 600 apps to Sumo is X amount of time to get into the Jira, blah, blah, blah. It, it, there's, there's a lot of effort there, and you've got to incentivize, well, I've got to incentivize developers to say, look, there is a benefit here. So if, if you can see every transaction for this, even outside of your application, is that useful to you? versus you logging everything yourself and you don't have access to some other data to get that, then, then there is. So, so there's an 
member of one of the other way, depending on the management decisions to say, okay, we're going to go with elk stack and uh, try and consume that. I think that's, that's I'm not, I'm not the guy who would make that decision, I guess, is the answer. I could it have gone the other way. I think it comes down to how much you want your developers being responsible for things. And if you want your, your team, a team to be responsible for the stack and the app and maintaining the app permanently into the future, then you need to offer tools to achieve that. And I know there are some teams where they maybe have the stack and the app, but then they don't maintain it. Or they have the app and they maintain it, but they don't have the stack. Or there's some combination of the three. Um, and I think at car sales, could we have, could we have gone full elk? It, it, in Amazon, it's, it's very expensive. And, and for us, because we do so much data, it, being cognizant of what you send somewhere is an important thing to do. So we, we can do, we were talking about it earlier tonight, we could do a lot of data based on the, the price. We could, do, we, could do, we could do a lot of data, but, but we, apps have to choose and be responsible, as they are in Amazon for running their service. So if their service takes 20 instances and they should be running it on two instances, they're going to be responsible for those instances and held accountable at some point, not by me probably, but at some point by someone with a checkbook, right? So I think there's a, there's a gray area in between and it is fine, but it, I think it comes down to your size and, and how people are using it. If, if no one's using it, if you're writing stuff there and no one's using it, then they, no one will care. But if you're, if you're using it for, for things and you, you think you want to use it more, and I feel like it's a very important tool that, that in our arsenal, then I think it's worth, yeah, but everyone's, your mileage may vary, I guess, is the, is the point. Is that a reasonable answer, I feel like? You've still got your arms crossed, so. Much better. <laughs> much better. Sure, up 12 billion images a month. Yes. Can you possibly with data like you? That's a, it sounds like an incredible amount of data when you think about photos of all the cars and the person that says put data on the car. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we it, 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 it is a lot of data. Uh, we use we use we use blob storage for that, so we don't use S3. Um, how do we cycle it? Well, it's all, I mean, that's a, yeah. We've got, we've got a few partnerships with a few good vendors, and, and we love them. I mean, we, we specifically, we use Akamai, that's not a secret, right? Um, and uh, for the images specifically, we have a, an app that we wrote, the car sales wrote, that scales, and um, it runs in Azure at the moment, and we go from maybe Four instances at very early times, up to up to two hundred during peak hours. So the, the the variance because of our traffic pattern, which a lot of Australian sites get, is very sort of eight pm, three am, eight pm, three am heavy. We uh, we scale a lot. So that, that was one where we built ourselves. Right, like we went to a, a CDN and said, look, we want to have a system where users can upload to you, our users, not your users, and store whatever they want because we don't have a limit on the number of images you can upload as a as a as a user on the site anymore, we used to, you know. Um, there's a lot of images, yeah. I think the average number of images per car is like 17 or something, and now they just get bigger and bigger and bigger because people have got better phones and... So you don't actually scale them down when you import them, you just take the... We, we save the raw, yeah. There is a, now we're getting very specific about our image serving, in case anyone else wants to. Um, <laughs> but we, we do process them, so we had watermarks and and we had, because we have multiple products, right? So we have boat sales. If you've got a boat car, maybe it'll go on both, and maybe we'll watermark it, boat sales on boat sales. Um, so we've, there's a lot stored there. So maybe the raw, and then maybe 100 versions of the raw. And then maybe we'll flush that because of some reason, and then maybe we have to regenerate them all. So that's that's the image serving. And then obviously we've got a big heavy-cation layer in front, so we're a big Akamai. Love Akamai as well. No, no, this, this, I was mostly, mostly focused on logs, but if you, <laughs> no, so those those were direct from Sumo. Yeah. Um, so there's there's sort of two APIs and, and there's a few Sumo guys here that maybe they can answer your question better. Um, but generally the way that, that I sort of play it is we ingest the team will ingest, they're aware of what they, what's going in, and then that 
those dashboards are queries against that data for a period of time, running continuously or, or whenever they're looking at them. Um, and those are both via APIs as well. So we've got some Sumo logic querying built into our Slack install where someone can go sort of like tail application this and see five entries and the last five entries and, and things like that. And that's through the regular API. Dashboard API is different. Um, I think that just returns you a JSON set result that you can display however you like. So if you had something you think looks better, then you could use that. Although we're quite happy. Any final questions? 